Hello everyone, good evening. I am Carla, the Cosmic Crone, and I, I am here to share with you the Divine Feminine Astrology Reading for New Moon Gemini. This is happening where I live. It is happening on um, June 10th at 6.53 a.m. And it is a solar eclipse. And this is pretty big. And I'm, I'm really excited because I just learned in the last few days that the sun will rise eclipsing. Uh, we will have a crescent sun with the moon taking a bite out of the sun, disk of the sun. Um, and I am planning to be on the shore in a celebration with women for this particular day. And uh, so I will be facing the east on the coast at the beach when the sun rises. And I'm hoping I will be able to see it. The question is, here in Maine, we often have fog and mist in the morning and the sun has to get pretty high before it will show through. The clouds will sometimes stack up in the east. So if that happens, I may miss actually seeing the eclipse. But I will be at the beach no matter what. And so it doesn't matter whether you live in a place where you can see this eclipse or not. An eclipse, especially a solar eclipse, is a particularly intense and potent portal. All new moons are portals. All full moons are portals. And all lunar and solar eclipses are portals. And the most powerful are solar eclipses. And uh, I've always likened this, the, the image of a solar eclipse that comes to me is pointing your kayak into class five rapids. It is a door opening that changes everything and it changes everything for an entire eclipse cycle up to, um, there's usually two solar eclipses a year, but certainly for a year, a solid year, this eclipse will change things. And they also usher in 19 year cycles. So imagine, imagine where you were 19 years ago. That was the last time there was a solar eclipse in Gemini. And where do you anticipate being 19 years from now? It starts now. I am extremely fond of this eclipse. Um, I've, I, sometimes I talk to you about my personal charts um, when they're really tied in to the general reading, and this is no exception. This solar eclipse is happening right on top of my natal Vesta. It is conjunct, uh, the sun and moon together are conjunct Mercury, so we have Mercury and the sun and the moon all together sitting on top of my Vesta at the, in the 19th degree of Gemini. And my Mercury is trine Vesta. That means that Vesta, the priestess, and Mercury, the messenger, are flowing in my natural energy of my natal chart. And so that Mercury is tagging Vesta, and they're all tagging um, my natal Mercury. So this, this speaks a lot to me personally about my mission and why I'm here on the planet. And um, it also uh, shakes me up a little bit because of ways that perhaps I have been ignoring my mission or holding back in my mission. So this eclipse is a portal for me to step into my mission fully and a clue of what that mission is about is Vesta, the priestess, and Mercury, the communicator, the messenger, the writer. And that Mercury in Aquarius happens to be in my third house, which includes writing and communication um, in its domain. So I'm sharing that with you 
because you may well wonder, where is this eclipse touching your natal chart? Which doors and portals are opening up for you? So is there a transit to a planet? It, which house is it in? Where's Gemini in your chart? And if you want to know that, the solar, um, the Lilith Divine Feminine Astrology Reading Eclipse Special is still on for two more days until the end of the day on Thursday. So I'm giving you that plug because this eclipse is incredibly important, incredibly significant wherever it's landing in your chart. It's telling you something you need to know. It is ushering in change, and that can be scary. Um, and it's certainly ushering in planetary change, and we're all on this planet together, and that can be scary. It can be intense. So let's take a step back now from my personal chart and your personal chart. <laughs> Thank you, Heather. Um, and look at what's going on in this chart. What's happening? Now, um, triple conjunction, sun, moon, and um, Mercury. Yeah. Oh, that's incredible. And then there, what's, what's significant here is that What happens at the exact moment of this eclipse is it's important. It feeds eclipse energy, whether or not it's indirect aspect to the eclipse. So at the moment of this eclipse, we have a whole bunch of planets that are merging their energies. And the most significant to me are Black Moon Lilith and Algol, the Lilith star. We have the intense divine feminine energy before patriarchy, that's Black Moon Lilith. We have, she is the ultimate Lilith, the Lilith, um, the Lilith of the sculpture behind me. I don't know how well you can see it, but it's, a, it's kind of a Lilith sculpture. She is coyote, she is, that's the painting behind me. She is dirt, she is fertility, she's sexuality, and she creates. And she comes to women at night in our dreams, in our deepest places, and says, wake up, wake up, remember who you are, you are divine. What the patriarchy is telling you about who you are is not true. Wake up, speak out. Own yourself, own your power. And she's merging with her dark sister, her dark avatar, Algol, the demonized goddess, the one who was forbidden by the patriarchy. She was supplanted, replaced, and um, I can't remember the word for it. She was banished, that's the word, banished. And so she's, she shows up in these dark goddesses like Kali and Sekhmet, these rageful, vengeful goddesses. The heads will roll, blood will sh be shed goddesses, and we're scared of her. She represents, in some ways, the feminine rage that we are very adept and practice at suppressing because... We have been taught that it's wrong, bad, scary, evil, and the last thing we want to be is wrong, bad, scary, evil, and destroyed for it. These two are merging at this portal. This is, uh, do you remember the Great American Eclipse four years ago in August 2017? It went from Salem, Oregon, all the way to um, the coast of North Carolina. Um, that eclipse was square Algol, the demonized goddess, and it, all, it represents a waking up of this goddess, this goddess energy, um, in the middle of the Me Too movement and 
the um, Trump administration, if you can call it that. And this is, a, this is a completion, a completion of that energy where these two aspects of the divine feminine are merging their energies during this eclipse portal. What else is happening? That's happening in Taurus. And in Taurus, we have another triple conjunction. Um, and that is Uranus, Ceres, and Albion. Albion's a thresholder. He's a shaman dude. He takes people between the worlds. He brings people from birth into life and from life into death. And Ceres is the great mother, the great nurturer, Gaia herself. And Uranus is spiritual epiphany and unexpected change or news. So this, it's, it's important to be aware that this eclipse is ushering in shift and these planets here are uh, making that very clear. And we human beings, Albion says, you have the opportunity to help each other through the door. Thank you, Susan. <laughs> I have a new dress on and I've been swimming. Um, so that is, that, that's energy that's happening um, right next door to the eclipse. There is another major conjunction, Hecate, another crossroads, thresholder, goddess who takes people from this world to the underworld and back. She, she is, she takes us there and she tends not to leave us or she, she's for when we are going into the underworld to do our personal work and then we need escorting back. So that's one of Hecate's roles as a crone and she is merging her energy with Chiron, the great healer and mentor. And who else is merging energies? Ah, we have the great attractor, who is this mysterious point way out beyond our galaxy. The great attractor is the great void of the goddess. She has a lot in common with Black Moon Lilith, uh, representing something that is universal feminine, but it is so universally feminine that it's, it's non-gendered, but it is that kind of ultimate feminine energy that is so attractive and so powerful that everything is moving towards it. There is a sense of vast inevitability about that point. And she is, the great attractor is, uh, merging her energy with Juno. Juno, the queen of the goddesses. She is all of this feminine but embodied and at work on the planet. She rules money, social justice, what's good for the women and children, and sacred marriage, those, those sacred unions between, that is in many ways is the foundation of a society or a community. Uh, the, the marriages, the relationships, the families, um, and it's ironic that Juno is the goddess who tends to the well-being of women and children because she was not allowed to have children. Her husband, the king of the gods, um, would not impregnate her. That's like another metaphor for a different story, but it's part of what's going on. And it's close enough, it's very close to being opposite the eclipse it's within the range of an opposition to this eclipse. And that means there is a ton of projection and a lot of energy moving back and forth between the eclipse and between the vastness of the feminine and the practicality of bringing that feminine to play on the planet in society. So what that makes, 
first off, we've got we've got Black Moon Lilith and Algol are in communication with Pluto. They are in an exact trine to Pluto over in Capricorn. So Black Moon Lilith and Algol are activating death and transformation, which is simply saying you're standing at a portal. It's time to step over the threshold. And if you need support and help with that, Albion is saying there are people who can help you. Hecate is saying there are people who can help you. There are people who are embodying that energy and can guide you. They've been back and forth a few times themselves in this lifetime or in other lifetimes. So that's going on. This eclipse is saying what needs to die. Scary shit. It is. I'm not going to sugarcoat this. It's terrifying. How do I know? Because I've been dancing with this my whole life. What is, what needs to die? What do you need? We like to use the word let go of. Well, our mind says if I let go of that, I won't exist anymore. And that's really normal. That's the way minds work. It, it's what keeps us here in the body. And yet, it also can keep us stuck. It can keep us clinging to situations and beliefs and patterns and habits that hurt us. We could say they do not serve us anymore. They actively harm us. They keep us from uh, thriving or maturing or growing as we are meant to. They keep us from having what we want. So all of this is going on. All of this is hyper activated at this full moon eclipse, new moon eclipse, excuse me. So one other thing, there, there are a number of other things that are going on, but one other thing that I just want to bring attention to, because there it is, there is almost a grand square. If you, if you plug in the sun and the moon, you have a grand square. That means there is a lot of really intense energy that is kind of locked together in a box. And it's sitting there, say, and, and you might say, what am I going to do with this energy? This could be, I don't know how many of you do kayaking. I've done a minimal amount of it. But mostly, I just... Um, I, I just look at pictures and watch videos, and it's scary. It's kind of scary. Class 5 rapids. What do you do? You strap on your helmet. You check and make sure your kayak is pointed down the chute. Hands and paddles in and go. No resistance. And uh, allow yourself to feel what you feel. And allow yourself, you're going to be submerged. And you take a deep breath and you're submerged. But you're going to come out. You're going to come up. And keep going. And then you'll be in a pool where you can stop and integrate the experience. That's what a solar eclipse does. And you might feel with this square, and I'm going to describe the square in a moment, that you've actually got your kayak sideways and maybe it feels like you're going to go tumbling over instead of riding the water through the hole. Sound like I know what I'm talking about with kayaking, don't I? Um, you don't want to be crosswise of the flow in big rapids. So what do you need to do? to get aligned, to get into the flow. Well, let's take a look at the energies that are being activated here. The four corners of this square, Sun, Moon, Mercury in Gemini, Vesta 
at 15 Virgo. Vesta is moving through Virgo. She is the high priestess. She lives inside of you, male or female, inside your sacred sexual center. We would call that the second chakra. With women, I talk about the womb space. And there is an altar there. It has the eternal flame of your erotic energy. And Vesta is keeping that flame tended. She makes sure it does not go out. And she has other roles in your life as priestess. And, for, uh, and she may even activate inside of you where you are to walk, besides being your own priestess, you are walking in life as a priestess in service to others. Um, she represents devotion, tending that flame, tending what is most important. And that includes self-care and self-love, tending to your vessel, which is incredibly important. And she at the moment is in an exact opposition to Nessus in Pisces. Nessus is the one who refers to ancestral trauma, often related to the body to physical and sexual abuse. And it is something that all too many of us have experienced in this lifetime. It is something that our parents and ancestors may have experienced one way or another, trauma, abuse. Um, and also, I, I include in abuse and sexual abuse, conservative religious teaching that denies our sexuality, that criticizes us, uh, forbids all but certain expressions of sexuality, one man, one woman, one marriage, for example, who keeps us ignorant about our, the full potential and truth of our sexuality, our orgasmic energy, and all of the magic and power that it has beyond making babies and um, expressing love and appreciation in a relationship. So we are basically lied to about that, those of us who have been raised in conservative religions that denies the magic and power of our femininity and our female sexuality, and of course, male sexuality as well. Both, all genders, are repressed and limited by these ideas, this co-option and commodification of sexuality. So Nessus is right there in Pisces doing that deep healing work and right now across from Vesta, opposite Vesta, and they are both in a square to the great attractor in Juno, which I've already described, Juno of the sacred marriage, Juno of wealth, and justice and what is good, the foundation of wealth and justice is what is good for the women and children. That is one way of looking at Juno. So this is in a square which may feel locked down, stuck. Where do we go from here? Well, I'll tell you what we've got cutting across that square. We have Black Moon Lilith and Algol uh, communicating with Pluto. We also, at this very moment, opposite Pluto is Mars. Mars is like sending an arrow of fire, a, a sword of fire towards Pluto saying, we can cut through this bullshit. We can open up. This eclipse is a moment of opening and it may feel extra hard because of this square, because it seems like we're having to move a lot of energy and when energy is moving, chaos happens until we find the center. So how do you find the center? How do you get how do you find the sweet spot of that chute for your kayak? I believe in ritual and ceremony. 
you have uh, 36 hours before the eclipse. You have the entire day of the eclipse. Um, I will be in ceremony for the entire 48 hours tomorrow and all day Thursday and probably some of Friday. And I will probably, I'm, I'm debating, I think Thursday afternoon I might be able to bring ceremony to the people and if so I will, prob the focus of that will probably be my womb wisdom portal group. Um, so I'll, I'll put that together. If you are not in the Womb Wisdom Portal, um, let me know. And uh, you can actually get in there through a button here on this page. It is a group for women who are on a Divine Feminine Awakening and Womb Wisdom Path. So I will support you in ceremony, but you can definitely do your own. And it's very simple light a candle, get your journal, get quiet and listen. Listen to Lilith. Listen to the sun and the moon and Mercury. Listen to Vesta. And if you do realize that you need support in this, you want to know more about what all of these planets mean for you personally, reach out to me. I'll put a link um, I'll put links all over my page so it'll easy, be easy for you to find. And you can enroll in this special and we will get to you in the next couple of weeks and you'll have your reading. Um, this, is, this is extraordinary time. This is a beautiful aspect. And so recognize that you were made for this. It's a cliche. You chose to be born at this time. Your gifts are needed at this time. You have everything that you require to thrive in this time. So tap into this eclipse energy, this new moon, settle in and listen for your instructions. Listen to what is ready to shift. Listen to what is ready to die. Listen for what is ready to be born. This painting behind me, it's a picture of birth. And the moon is the midwife or the doula. Actually, the moon is the doula. She is supporting the mother. And you can't really see it in this picture but it's the ancestors. Those are red rock hands of the ancestors catching the baby, the galaxy baby that's being born. So that is kind of like an eclipse. It is gathering up all of the energy and saying, be born, be born through this eclipse. So that is what I have for you today. I am so glad that you are listening. Thank you for being here. And let me know if I can serve you in any way.